Hi, I'm Mike Sullivan and you're watching Medfield.tv. Access to our community. This is Aditi Tate, Executive Director at Medfield TD. Today, I'm here to introduce a new show, a series called Live Your Passion with host Alex Steven. Alex, welcome. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. And I'm really excited to do Live Your Passion on Medfield TV. And I'm Alex Steven from Life Transforming Treasures. I'm an author, a speaker, and a transformation coach. I empower people to transform their lives to one of freedom and fulfillment. Oh, that's such a beautiful introduction. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have done better. <laughs> yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about what you want to accomplish with this show. Um, Live Your Passion is such a great title. And you know, how did you come up with that? And, and what's your intention uh, of reaching our audience? The intention with this show, I'm, I'm really excited, Live Your Passion, and how it came about is through my coaching clients, I tell them, get on a mission to live your passion. And the intention on this show is to let people know, the audience know, that we all have a story. We all gonna have obstacles and challenges in this life. But as the guests are going to be bringing, you know, in the future, you're going to see that each one of them has a story. And you're going to learn f how they overcame obstacles and challenges. What I want to share on this show is the wisdoms that, you know, through my story, through what I lived through, my family and I. And that's how we came up with Life Transforming Treasures. And... You know, it's, you know, we're going to talk about faith and gratitude, courage, commitment. Those are some of the themes we're going to cover. Okay. Yeah, that seems like a lot of things. So, um, so Alex will be doing a series of shows. Um, Alex, do you want to share some of, you know, how you turned tragedies into triumphs? Yes. Uh, one of the examples I want to share, you know, that's very close to me is that... Um, when we found out our son was deaf, my wife and I was newly married. We were in our early 20s. And it was his first birthday, the day he got baptized. And we had this big party in Trinidad. You know, Trinidad, yeah. how it is, music, food, the sunshine. A lot of friends and family. And it was a festive day until one of my wife's aunts said, you know, Larry might be deaf. And we didn't want to believe her, but, you know, we started talking about it as the day progressed. And we noticed that Larry slept through all the music and the noise. And, you know, I started to go behind him and click behind his ears. And it seemed to us our fears were, you know, coming true. He wasn't responding. Wow. And did you notice anything before that? We never did. Huh. We never did. And the next day, we took him to the hospital, and the doctor, with a bottle and spoon behind his ears, ping, 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 and look at us and said, your son is deaf. Oh, that must have been a real... And that, that was really, you know, a big, you know... Um, you know, I don't want to call it a tragedy, but it was something new that we have never dealt with. Mm. And it changed our lives forever. Okay. Did you have any specialists that, uh, uh, that you were able to show, bring Larry to, or, you know, what was the, um, the what did you, how did you deal with it? Well, that's the thing. I asked the doctor, so, well, what do we do? How deaf is he? Will he be able to hear? He said, I don't know. I just know he's deaf. Okay, so, was he, he was not a specialist? No, he was okay. not. A, he was just an ear, nose, and throat doctor. 
Uh, but as time progressed, we made inquiries and we brought him to the United States when he was two years old for testing at Mercy Hospital in Chicago. Okay. But that was a really disastrous moment for us because we were young. It's our first child, you know, a baby boy. We were so happy. But, you know, my wife and I looked at each other when the doctor said that. And we looked at each other's eyes. And without words, we made a commitment that we were going to do the best for our child. Well, you know, as parents, you really want to do that, but, uh, you know, that's such a hard decision to make. It, it was a hard decision. But so what made you come to the United States versus going anywhere else in the world? Well, what happened is the doctor said, take him to the school for the deaf and get him registered. In, in Trinidad? In Trinidad. He said, that's the next, we asked him, well, what should we do? He said, take him to the school. So we went to the school, which was a few minutes drive away. And the principal, Mrs. Donaldson, I remember her like if it was yesterday. Yeah. And she said, it's going to take seven years before he gets in the school. The waiting list is so long. And we said, no, huh. <laughs> this is not acceptable. What else could we do? And she looked at us, Aditi, and she said, let me give you guys a piece of advice. You all are young. This is your first child. Leave everything in Trinidad and go to the United States to Gallaudet University. And mind you, we, we'd never been to the States. We never heard of Gallaudet University. And again, my wife and I said yes, because we wanted the best for our son. Oh, okay. And do, did you have the, you know, the means to come and live here? And uh... It took us some time, some research, and you know, I call Mrs. Donaldson retrospect. She was the first angel on our journey. She gave us names and people to call at Gallaudet University, and we kept in contact with them. Okay. And when we came for his testing in Chicago, and they said he was profoundly deaf, they gave him a pair of hearing aids. Uh, my wife was pregnant with charisma then, seven wow, months pregnant. Okay. And we went to Washington, D.C. at Gallaudet, and they did some testing on Larry, um, some psychological tests, and they said, he's a pretty bright child. They want him in the program. So things started to open up for us. We didn't sit down and, you know, moan about it. We said, we got to get the best for our child. Okay. And I understand you uh, got a student visa to come here, so... So yeah, when they told us um, they'd given us one year to bring him, he was two years old, and we said, okay, so we went home, and we just started to do things to make money. I had a nine-to-five job. My wife had a full-time job also. And I bought a taxi and just started saving money. We had no idea how we were going to come to the States. Okay. Legally. So you, you got a taxi in Trinidad. You were in trying Trinidad. to raise funds to come yeah, here. Yeah, after work, I'll work at night, the taxi on weekends, and just save money. And we say, we're going to find a way. Okay. And we had no idea at that time how. But we know we were going to do the best for our child. Oh, well, that's amazing. Yeah. It's, and what happened, once they told us that in Gallaudet, we got some hope. Okay. There's a chance. When we saw the school, you know, it was newly built, and it's on the campus of Gallaudet University, the elementary school, the high school, the middle school, and high school. It's like, wow. And so, you didn't have that seven-year wait or anything like that here. No. So they were they ready wanted to him, accept right away. They, they wanted him right away, mm -hmm. and we said, we can't do that. We've got to find a legal way. We got to save money, and they said. Um, and again, he was two years old at the he's time. He's two years old at the okay. time, and they gave us until he was three, and we still were not ready, so we asked for an extension. Okay. But what happened is that when he was three and a half years old, um, the contact we had at Gallaudet University invited us to come in to the summer learning vacation. And she said, come and see, spend a week on the campus and meet other parents and deaf students and professionals. And that was our light bulb moment when okay. we saw deaf dentists, deaf doctors, wow. deaf lawyers, professionals. And we was like, this is what we want for our son. Okay, so he was three and a half years old when you three moved and a to half, the United Three States. and a half years when we came to the summer learning vacation. Okay. And this is, you know, what I tell people. When you make a commitment, the universe moves. When you make a commitment, you get the courage to make difficult and dangerous decisions. And 
we made a commitment, we made a life-altering decision that we were going to leave everything behind and move to the United States. We didn't know how, but we know we were going to do it. Okay, and you had no family, no friends, no, you didn't know anybody here, and you were coming we, with a wife and two yeah, children. Two children, we didn't know two anybody. Young kids, two and young kids, one with kids, special needs. One with special needs. And within six months, we were in the United States. We left on January, Saturday, January 8, 1983. Once we came to that summer learning vacation, we made the sacrifice to come. And we didn't only spend one week, we spent two weeks. They had two sessions and we said we're gonna do the two. Okay. And things opened up for us. Okay. And it's been a wonderful journey since then. It's been a wonderful journey. Uh, you know, it hasn't been easy, but it's been worth it. Okay, and so um, some of your uh, coaching, I understand you're a transformational coach when you introduce yourself. Yes. So uh, speak to us about a little bit about that. Yeah, so I'm a transformational coach. I'm a certified life coach. And I had no intentions of being a coach. Okay, but so I think you just want to explain just a little bit about what a life coach okay. means too. Okay, so um, in terms of transformational coaching, what I do is I take people from where they are to where they want to be. And I act as a guide, a consultant, and somebody who's going to hold you accountable. How I got into life coaching, um, what I call transformation coaching, is because as a teenager, young teenager, I always give people advice. People came to me for advice, you know, on job opportunities, on relationships, on investments, and they got such quick results. Okay. And this was when you were a teenager? This was in a teenager Trinidad. in Trinidad, in school and neighbors and where I worked part-time in the summer. And I just enjoy doing it. I love to talk to people and help people. And for some reason, all my life, people come to me with confidential information, people I have never met before, and they tell me things and I give them advice and it works out for them. So I was, as I was setting up Life Transforming Treasures and doing speaking and authoring our books and making our CDs and products, one of my mentors told me, why don't you do life coaching? And I started to laugh. I say I'm a certified life coach, but I don't think I want to do that. I, he said, from what I've learned from you, you, you've been doing it all your life, so why not incorporate it in your business? So I took it as advice, and I started doing it. And when I saw the results and the testimonials from my clients, it's really amazing. Okay, so was that an easy journey? Because again, you know, uh, one of the markets, I've done some of that, as I told you. Um, it's, it's kind of a hard market to break it because there's so many different life coaches and you know. Yeah, it's, it, it is, um, you know, there's a lot of um, life coaches out there. But the unique thing about me is I tell people and people tell me in their testimonial, there's no other Alex Stephen. Okay. So I bring my uniqueness. Okay. I bring my stories, my experience, um, the way I speak to people. But I, I don't use a special script. I tell people, each program, each client is tailor-made to their needs, okay. and they all have different needs. Okay, so you're not following a formula no. other than some basic, I think it's, some you know, basic, comes down yeah. to uh, common sense right. and really a will to do something if you really want to do it. Right. And so you just take them there. You just, you have some tools to help them reach that. Place. Yeah, I have tools to help them, and I tailor it to their situation. Okay. Yes. And, um, so transformational coaching, that's a little bit of that. And then um, I think the other thing, you were talking about courage. So I understand you wrote a book yes, yeah. <laughs> with your family. Yeah, we all, uh, my wife Raz and my son Larry and daughter Charisma, we wrote the book Courage in Our Hearts, A Family's Love Story. Wow, yeah. that's, that's pretty <laughs> profound. So yeah. do you want to talk a little bit about uh, how that came about and, well, uh, and the content? Yeah, sure. Uh, the book, it should be on Amazon this week. Okay. We're getting some technical difficulties, so it's going to be in print and, um, and, and the digital format also. But the, how it came about is that as we told our stories, you know, the two big jobs I had in corporate America when I was graduating from Howard University, uh, the partner, uh, I was an accountant, 
and he asked me to tell him how I came to United States. So I told him the story and he said, you have the job, you know, in a few minutes. And the same thing when I was in banking, being an auditor, I wanted to go to corporate lending and people say, oh, you will never, they'll never take you because you're a certified public accountant. They don't want that type of people in lending. And I tell people, I'm not a typical certified public accountant. I have a personality. <laughs> and um, the last bit was an early interview. He asked me to tell him how I came to the United States. And I told him my story. Okay. And at the time, I didn't realize my story was so effective. I, I didn't pay it any man. I was like, oh, everybody have a story. Mm. And um, how it really came about is a few years, well, five years ago to this date, I got to speak on a stage in Hawaii. I was this personal development company. And impromptu, they picked people to talk okay. uh, about their story. And I spoke for a few minutes impromptu. And the effect it had on people, people were crying. People were coming up to me and saying, you've got to write a book. You will impact people across the world with this story. And that's how it started, okay. you know. This was Larry's about. story, pretty much. Um, well, our story on how we found out Larry was deaf and how we made the life-altering decision to okay. leave everything and everyone behind and migrate to the United States. Okay. And, you know, some of it, you know, I don't associate with the tragedy in some ways, but even when I first came, it was kind of like that, leaving everything behind that you know. Yeah. And um, I was young, and it, it was tough. We didn't have money, but... Uh, again, the opportunities this country has to offer um, is just amazing, and I feel truly blessed, just I'm sure, as I'm sure that you do. Yes, this country has been really a blessing for us. Uh, there's opportunities here, but you have to take action. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you just can't, you know, yeah. wait for it to come to you. Yeah. You have to do something about it. You and, you know, something. it's a little bit harder sometimes. You know, we have accents, we have all of these things, but in spite of it, you overcome and uh, you can reach anything, you can do anything that you want to do, and I truly believe that. Yeah, talking about accents, I learn, you know, pleasantly. People <laughs> love my accent. Yeah, so. I, think it's, I think it's really nice, too. <laughs> yes, um, so, with the, um, you said you went to Hawaii. Um, is that where you met the world-renowned motivational speaker, Les Brown? I didn't meet Les Brown there, but I went there to get started with this personal development company in okay. direct selling. And, you know, I thought it was a great opportunity because when I left corporate America, I knew I want to do my own business. I did different things, real estate, financial services, and I got into this company. I said, yeah, this is going to be it. But in retrospect, I see where I really went to talk on that stage. Okay. And for people to give me the encouragement on this door open for me. I had no idea about getting into personal development, being a motivational speaker, being an author. When people told me I had to write a book, I was like, I'm in finance. I can't write. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, from there, a year after, we, de we went to a boot camp in Orlando. And my wife and I, through talking, it was, the name of the boot camp was turn your passion into profits. So whatever okay. you're passionate about, build a business around it. And we had different ideas, but it came back to, we want to work with people in the deaf community. We want to give back and share our story and help people see the obstacles we came up, okay. you know, overcame. And we decided at that time, we did a website called Deaf Parenting. But the feedback we got was like, I don't have a deaf child, I'm not married, I don't have a child. But we were affecting people's lives and people say, you're changing my life, you, you know. So that's how we evolve into um, life transforming treasures. Okay. Um, one person uh, in my church told me, he read our manuscript, we had a manuscript on Imaginable Miracles, 26 pages. And he said, you know what? You have like 10 different themes in here. There's so much in here. We could make a lot of movies. He's in the movie oh, making really? business. Okay. Yeah. But that's, uh, that's not Les Brown, though. That's, that's not Les okay. Brown, but he's the one who gave me the advice. And he said, Alex, you're going to impact millions of people across the globe. You need to get speaker training. Okay. 
so be Katrina. That's, that's how you... Um, well, I came home that night and I got an email from the guy who I spoke on his stage in Hawaii. Okay. And he said, I'm having a webinar in 30 minutes with Les Brown. He's a world-renowned speaker. And I heard of Les mm -hmm. Brown. And I went on the webinar and I had it on speaker so my wife could hear in the next room. And after the webinar, I went to her and I said, um, this was Wednesday, and I said, next Thursday, we have to go to California. Oh, wow. And she said, oh, <laughs> there you go again, joking. Why are we going to California? And I told her, um, you know, as we spoke about it, she said, okay, we'll go, both of us. And I told her why we should go, uh, if we want to spread this message. And we went, it was 2010, and we met Les Brown. Okay. Uh, so, that's, yeah, so that's that's how we started. The, okay. That's how we met and, and since started. then you've been doing a lot of the motivational speaking. Yes, well, once we met him, uh, I, you, we met a couple of people that work with him also that we're very close to this day, Vince Toran, Dr. Um, Dr. Julie Van Putten. Okay. And we've been very... Les Brown is a, a friend and a, a, a coach well, to dynamic, us. Yeah. He's dynamic. He, he, he's, <laughs> you know... When people ask me to describe him in one word, I, s I just use the word humble. Hmm. He's, you know, his humility just touches you, and he just loves to share, and you love to be around him. Yeah, the I think energy, he talks about positive, uh, positive things, but then he also says, don't ignore, you know, out of your um, bad things happen, but how do you get out of it? How, how do you, you get deal out with of it? it? That's, yeah, that's he, his. he says you're going to fall, but mm -hmm. make sure you fall on your back yeah. so that you could look up and get up. I said that's that's a nice way to summarize. Yeah, that. yeah. So, so. Uh, yeah. So there are people out there. You know, if you want to follow something, there are people out there to help you out too. Yes, and, and you you have to look for help. You know, I always say, asking for help is a sign of strength. Some weakness. people think it's weakness, <laughs> yeah. but asking for help is a sign of strength. Ask for help. Okay. Yeah. So um, again, you you're a coach. You're an author. And do you have any plans for writing any other books? Yes, we, uh, matter of fact, we wrote Courage in Our Hearts, A Family's Love Story. And we have an a action guide, what we call an accompaniment to that, which is called How to Discover Your Inner Treasure. So it goes through the 10 lessons and asks you questions and reflects on the different um, lessons that we have in Courage in our hearts. So we have that. I also have inspirational life quotes, which is a collection for your daily motivation. It's one a day for the entire year. And we have some others we're working on right now, especially for special needs parents of special needs children, which is the individual education plan, how to really do that effectively. So we have a lot of things in the works. And you have some packages to give away, I understand. Yes, we, um, I want to give away a package at the end of the show. I'll give something free, a personal development power pack that's going to help you, support you, and enhance this conversation. And you have a website for that, so you can probably just yeah. the audience. Yeah, the w um, it's a personal development power pack. There's a lot of information in it, a lot from Les Brown, videos, audios, books that you could use to help you along in your personal development. And the website is www.pdpowerpack.com. Again, it's www.pdpowerpack.com. And that's free to you to help you enhance what you're doing and, and, and support this conversation that we're having. Okay, and uh, there's something else that uh, I'd like to tell you about. A Stephen Family Education Fund um, that uh, Alex and his family has set up. So we'd like you to tell us a little bit about the fund and yeah. how it got started and the inspiration behind it. The inspiration behind the Stephen Family Education Fund is that our entire life, when we look at our success, it was education. And there were people who came before us, people who we do, don't even know, that sacrificed and gave so that we could benefit. Okay. So the inspiration is really to give back. Because look at Larry, where he came from. If he had stayed in Trinidad, it was people who came before us, who we don't even know, hundreds of years ago, who started Goldet University, all the teachers who taught him. 
and we want to give back to students who cannot afford to further their education. I think that's such a noble cause. And um, if uh, you know, how can they uh, get in touch with that fund if people are interested? Well, people could get in contact with us by going to the website, um, which is Life Transforming Treasures. But a short version is www. LTT7.com and contact us and we'll, you know, we could communicate from there. Because one of the things, you know, I want to mention, my wife and I, when we came here, we didn't know how we were going to make it. We had little savings to last us one year. That's what we had to show the U.S. Embassy to get a student visa. And we worked part-time. I had a few part-time jobs and we had to keep up our grades. And with our grades up, we got tuition scholarships. So there are a lot of people who made sacrifices and gave, and we want to do that. We want to continue that legacy. Yeah. And that's the inspiration behind the Stephen Family Education Fund. Okay. Yeah. And I think uh, some of just the background, I was really curious, because um, I come from India originally, <laughs> yeah. and you have Indian roots, yeah. but uh, you haven't been to India. No, I haven't been to India yet. <laughs> yeah. so, and I you're from Trinidad, and your uh, is it your great grandparents that? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm third generation Trinidadian, but my great grandparents came to Trinidad somewhere in the 1800s, and my grandfather, who I still adore, was born in Trinidad in 18 something. My dad was born in 1926 around there. Okay. So I'm third generation Trinidadian with. Uh, Indian roots, and I've got to get there. <laughs> he still has curry for lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Um, so just curious about how your, you know, what was their journey? Do you have some details on that or just even brief information? Yeah. Um, the, the journey, I know they came on a ship. Someone wrote a book. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone in Trinidad wrote a book. They went back and they got all the history. And... Um, my grandfather on my dad's side and my grandmother on my dad's side, their, their family came on the same ship, the wow. Fatal Razak or something like that is the name. And from reading the book, I think some of my wife's family, her great grandparents were on the same ship. That's amazing. <laughs> the same, you know, there were a number of ships that came over the years, but um, they all came on the same okay. ship years okay. ago. And they just settled and settled in Trinidad, yeah. And, um, so they came there as uh, was it uh, field laborers or what? yeah, they came as indentured laborers. Okay. Yeah, so they got land and money and you know to work the sugar cane and cocoa estates. Okay. You know. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Just you know, growing up, we never even thought that they were settled um, yeah, Indians. It's a, it's a diaspora. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And sometimes I think you've really like maintained the traditions and sometimes much more so because right now a lot of the uh, Indians in India, if I can say that, um, have adopted a lot of the Western culture into their life. But I feel that when we leave the country and then we come here and adopt the new country, we try hard to pass on the culture to our kids. Yeah, it's funny you said that because I remember when I was in elementary school, I went to Afrikaat Vedic, which is a, a Hindu school. Okay. Um, Trinidad is very cosmopolitan. Hindus, Muslims, Christians, blacks, whites, Indians, Chinese, Portuguese, a real mixture. Okay, melting pot. Uh, yeah, melting pot. And, you know, we go to everybody's homes for their different holidays like Diwali, Christmas, mm -hmm. Eid. And I remember the High Commissioner of from India came to our school for one of the, um, you know, the what we call speech day when you get awards. And he, when he looked at the different dances and the celebrations that he said in India, they don't have that no yeah. more. You guys preserve that uh, part of it. I remember him saying that in his speech. Yeah, I try to do that for my kids with the song, the dancing yeah. and, you know. As much as possible, because you can really, they are Americans. Yeah, they're know, born you, here. Yeah, yeah. You, you can really change that. But just giving, keeping up the traditions and culture, uh, we try to do that as much as we can too, right. so, which I'm sure you do. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you have a granddaughter. <laughs> granddaughter Ravina, which is, you know, she's the light of our okay. life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. She was born here. So her mom is from Singapore and her dad is from Trinidad and her her grandfather in Singapore, he is from India. Okay. Yeah, so really melting pot. And she was born in Massachusetts. Okay. 
She's yeah. five years old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen her pictures. So. Yeah, yeah. She's on the book cover too, She's isn't on the she? book cover, How to Discover Your Inner Treasure. And she's like, when is my book coming out? Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So it's all in the family. Yeah, it's all, all about family. your family. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and, you know, I think it's a great thing that you're sharing this with the world and, you know, here to inspire mm -hmm. and uh, motivate everybody to live their passion. Yeah. And, you know, what I tell people is that um, you've got to find your passion. You've got to find it and you've got to live it because we all have a purpose in this life. We all do, and we all have a story, and we're all going to have challenges and obstacles. But you've got to find ways to get over those. And people say, well, what it is drives you? you know, what, what got you into this business? And I say, I had no intention in making this a business. It just evolved over the years. One thing led to the other, and I just saw, you know, it really our passion to really help people. And, you know, I tell people when, I, when, you, when I'm your coach, I don't improve your life. I transform your life. And it's, it's the story of my life. And, um, you know, I tell people, my, first you've got to find your why, what it is that drives you. My why is my family. Mm -hmm. I want to work and have leisure time and do what we want, when we want, where we want, how much we want together. And that's what we're doing now. Okay. Uh, but that's that's my why. My granddaughter mm -hmm. is my why. I just want to be with around her as much as I could. And our passion is really to help people, especially students, to succeed. Okay. So that's what drives us. Okay, that's really great. And, uh, you know, I think we've given a nice introduction. And... Um, you make such a nice addition to our Medfield family yeah. of different shows. Um, and uh, if there's anything else that you want to say? Um. Yeah, I want to say, you know, I'm really excited to do this show, Live Your Passion. Thank you a lot for the opportunity. And as I You're said, welcome. yeah, t thank you. And uh, as I said, the guests I'm going to have, and I have signed up for the future shows, really have some incredible stories that the audience could learn from. And you're going to see the wisdoms, the, you know, what they, what they did in their situation. They could adapt it to their situation, whatever challenges they're going through. So, th so that's pretty exciting. And, you know, you, when you make a commitment, the universe moves. The universe moves to help you. The right people, the right opportunity is going to come. And that's what I tell people. Commitment causes miracles, but you've got to make the commitment. And as Bob Marley, the famous reggae singer, says, you don't know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. So I want you to remember that. You know, having challenges, having obstacles is not the end of the world. It's not easy, but you've got to try you know, as Les Brown say, you, you've got greatness within you. And you've got to believe that. And I wa in closing, I want to say, you know, go to the power pack, the personal development power pack. There's a lot of information there that's going to support this conversation, that's going to help you. And it, the, the website is, the link, sorry, is www.pdpowerpack.com. You could access it there. It's free and it's to help you along this journey. Right. Alex, thank you very much. This was extremely inspiring. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thank you for coming and yeah. doing this on Medfield TV. Yeah. We really appreciate it. And um, thank you for watching Medfield TV. We appreciate all your support. Good night. Production support provided by Medfield.tv.
access to our community.